Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to Learners Wargaming. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the new rules for Horus Heresy models in games of Warhammer 40,000. Now, I held off on this one a little bit because uh, I really haven't ranted or anything like this yet on this channel, and maybe a little bit in the uh, Imperial Agents video. And I, I was initially, this was going to be a rant if I didn't uh, look into it a little bit more closely, and it might still be a little bit of one. However, uh, what I'm going to do is go through this and kind of give my thoughts on what's going on. Now, I think that the Forge World models are, for the most part, pretty cool. Uh, I like them. Uh, there are some that are not worth it, so it's a huge pain to put together. Um, I've had some problems with some of the Adeptus Custodes uh, models. They've been difficult to put together and uh, with a Chaos Decimator. but And I don't own any of the really enormous ones. But of the ones I do have, uh, I, I like them pretty well. Now, one thing that happened fairly recently was that you had some plastic kits come out for some uh, previously Forge World models, most notably the ones that are, are big for the, the uh, Harus Heresy game such as the Leviathan Dreadnought, which I've got mine right here, so I did get one. And he's equipped with the Grav Cannon and the Melta Cyclone, I forget exactly what its name is, but this is my guy right here that I made from Salamanders. Uh, the Contemptor is technically a Forge World, although this has been in plastic for a long time. And we've also got uh, certain specialties, like Brayarth Ashmel here, who's one of my absolute favorites. I, I love Brayarth. I think he looks really, really cool. And uh, unfortunately, he cost a ton of points, but I, this guy is definitely uh, amongst my very, very favorite models because I think he just looks amazing. I do wish he was a little bit bigger. Uh, he's he's traditional Dreadnought sized, but he's, he's just awesome. Uh, he's only been in one game. Because I always just have a hard time fitting his 220 points into a list. But I like him a lot. Incidentally, this is my basic scheme for for uh, Salamanders here. I'll explain this in another video. Now, initially I kind of was under the impression that what was going on was these guys were just going to Legends and they were never going to be balanced again. And uh, you could basically forget about using them because... Uh, they're just going to get more and more out of balance. Now, I believe, as I've been paying a little more attention to what's going on and watch some other content creators' videos on this, that that's not quite accurate. What instead is going to happen is you're just not going to be allowed to use them in matched play, or excuse me, in competition play. You can use them in matched non-competition play. Um, but they're just going to get one data sheet and one point cost at the beginning of the edition, and that's it. They're not going to go back and rebalance these guys over and over again, like they do with the rest of the armies. Now, these are all Space Marine models. Uh, I didn't bring out my my uh, uh, Decimators from Forge World. I don't own any models that would be from the Harus Heresy era for any other armies, except for the Custodians. And the Custodians, as we will see, are, are not getting this treatment. So, what do they have to say about it? Well... In the past years, many war machines of the Rue series have received worlds for Warhammer 40,000. In the new edition, these units will return as Legends of the Harus Heresy. And it's not just Legends, but Legends of the Harus Heresy. It's still very much usable in game, but leaving competitive tournament battlefields to the core Warhammer 40,000 miniature strength. Now, what this does, what is really, it's a little different from Legends, and all they're saying is you can't use these in competition. But you can still use them in matched play at the local game store just fine. And really, they're kind of telling you, uh, don't complain if your opponent shows up with one. If you and you shouldn't, um, it's a fair number of models. And if somebody has one of these models and you just don't want, to, nah, I'm not playing against that thing. It's, I don't want it on there. Don't be like that. Just play against it. Uh, if it's really overpowered, just tell them the next time. Hey, man, that thing's kind of too much. Um, maybe keep it down or don't tailor your list quite so much or something like that. But but don't be telling people not to use their models, especially not ones like this this guy here was not cheap. This was like an $85 model. I mean, don't, don't be telling people not to use their, their models. Now, the, the thing is, though, 
And notice these are all space marine models. And the reason I bring that up is that there are a ridiculous number of space marine data sheets. I counted it up. There are 98 data sheets in the Space Marine Codex for 9th edition. There are 43 more space marine data sheets in the Imperial Armor Compendium. Uh, so that may, brings us to, uh, let's see, 98 plus 40, 141. Plus, uh, we just got that Agastus box set come out. So now we got the Brutalis Dreadnought and the Desolation Squad. So that brings us up to 143 total data sheets. And I'm not even including the ones that are chapter specific, which is probably at least another 20 to 20 to 20 to 30. I, I didn't even bother counting those up. Now, so what you're going to do is they're going to give you free data sheets for these. So they aren't going to be in codexes. You're just going to get them for free if you still want to use these, uh, including the Elusive Chaos Kratos. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the joke is about the Kratos. Uh, maybe this is something that for some reason was the one unit that Chaos didn't have. Uh, don't remember. It's an assault tank. And this thing has an insane number of options here. You've got a battle cannon. You can replace it with a melt a blast gun, whatever that is, a Voltkite card. Cardinal, two auto. You can replace its heavy bolters with two auto cans, two last cans, or two bolt kite calibers. You can replace them two of its heavy bolters with heavy flamers, two last cannons, or two bolt kite culverins. <sighs> Jeez, the weapon names. Um, and you can give it a combi weapon, a havoc launcher, a heavy bolter, a heavy flamer, multi multi melta, or a twin bolt gun. You can give it a hunter killer missile. Um, okay, got it. <laughs> Jeez. You'd think their tanks were made out of Legos sometimes. Yeah, I'm not going to go through all of this, but this is uh, a fairly tough battle tank, uh, but nothing too nothing too devastating. Line breaker. Um, it does all the normal tank things. I don't see any, I, other than the insane number of options. It's just, but when you think about it, how many different kinds of tanks do Space Marines really need? You've got, like, how many those kinds of different land raider? You got three different kinds of gladiator. You got several different kinds of vindicator. You got several different kinds of uh, predator. Um, you got uh, repulsors and repulsor executioners, and I probably oh sicar all the who knows how many different kinds of sicarans. Uh, how many different kinds of assault tanks do space marines need? Oh, I mean, you don't need eight gazillion kinds of tanks for one army. Now, Space Marines are by far the worst defenders here uh, because they're just the worst defenders in having multiple units. I mean, heck, they have how many different kinds of troops? But getting these getting these out is going to be helpful for balance because this is going to cut down from insane to merely um, excessive numbers of data sheets for Space Marines that they have to balance. And that's only talking about Space Marines. We're not even talking about all the other armies yet. Um, now, moving down here, we've got, uh, what else have we got? The collectors who, in, in, the legends of Harusaris rules ensure that collectors have these models, still have rules, those players who want to balance living game can have that too. At the same time, this makes it a much easier for new players who want to attend their first event, work out that you can actually put an army on what those rules are. Yes, this is also good for newbies in that you don't have this whole separate, oh no, these are Forge World. Or these are from Harusaris, and you can use them. And you don't have to worry about, like, well, why do these, some of these models cost a command point to use? Um, and also, because they just always weren't updated consistently with the rest of the army, like you'd have keyword mismatches and all kind of craziness in the compendium. And, and that could just not be, be great. So it just explicitly says, the only place you won't be able to use these data sheets in a competitive environment, particularly at official Warhammer 40,000 tournaments. And they won't receive change or balance update as the addition develops in meta shift. So, what we can probably assume from this is they they will redo these when eleventh edition edition comes out in three or four years. Um, balance is so much more important in competitive play. In non-competitive play, uh, a lot of times people are playing narrative armies. You have people that just aren't even prepared to compete competitively. Uh, you have just wide variations in what's actually going on. Whereas at a tournament, I mean, you're going to have wide variation in player skill and in lists, but they're all going to be oriented on winning, on the, winning the game to win the game. There's not going to really be too much com concern with narrative elements. So cutting down how much you have to balance to keep the meta healthy in the competition realm is greatly helped by reducing this. Um, now I'm a little, was a little worried that that these some of these units would would just not 
not be useful anymore. Uh, Bray Arthur was the one I was a little just like shocked that, oh my gosh, how can you take him away? Because he's a special character. He's not just any old uh, unit. Uh, I am not sure that this was appropriate for the special characters that are in the compendium, like the Tiberius, the Red Wake, or um, uh, God, what is that guy's name? Gabriel Anhalos there for the, the Blood Ravens. I don't know that that was the best choice. Uh, I, I disagree with it pretty strongly for the named characters. But uh, although I was originally just really kind of upset about this, I, I've calmed down a lot, um, and I'm glad I did because I'm not in, saying inaccurate things, I don't believe. Now, there's exceptions here. Uh, the Knights uh, are going to stick around, as are the Titans, um, because, well, they want you to play your $1,800 Warlord Titan, which, yes, I looked it up today. I believe it's one thousand eight hundred and I want to say ninety five dollars for a warlord titan, and that's just for the titan body. That does not include the weapons <laughs> that you have to buy separately. Uh, so they're not about if you are one of the few people that has bought one of those. Uh, yeah, you you can still use it in the in the event you play a game there where you can even get it on the table. Um, but it's better news for some of these knights, like these these uh, resin knight kits that they had that. Um, make up a lot of the choices in in the uh, Imperial and Chaos Knight armies. Such as, like here, we have the forthcoming Plastic Serastis Knight Lancer, which I believe is this guy right here. So some of these are getting moved over to plastic, which is good. Um, I, I do want to add, just jump back one bit. One of the other exceptions I think is that really is not great it is the Contemptor Dreadnought, at least the regular one, not the Relic. I, I kind of get it with the Relic, which had a lot more. The regular Contemptor Dread out there is no reason you shouldn't be able to use that in competitive play. It is not anything out of the ordinary. It's it's a very nondescript Dreadnought, and I don't see why you should really need that when it was really a problem. Um, now, I, granted, I'm focusing on Space Marines because that's, that's kind of where I'm looking at the Forge World stuff. But... Um, think that that's uh, kind of important. Let's go back up and take a look at this list real quick before we get into the exceptions. Where, where did my list... Oh, no, the list is down at the bottom. I'm sorry. Here are... Here's those. Oh, the Adeptus Custodes are getting exceptions. This is critical. Now, this is critical because the Adeptus Custodes are probably a good half of their units are Forge World. And also, it's consistent with their theme. They um, they are very much the Duty Eternal types. Uh, they're serving unchanged basically for 10,000 years. They also have... And they don't really change their technology. Um, but you, they would great. They, a lot of times, they're greatly dependent on Forge World items, and you would lose out on some of their most iconic models, like this guy. Uh, another one that I'm very, very happy with, the Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. I don't have the Galatus version yet with the sword, uh, which I, I want to get one. I actually might have two of these guys, or one of my favorites, this guy here. The Telemon Heavy Dreadnought. I, I would really hate to not be able to play this guy. Um, I realize that uh, he's a bit of a risky play, but he has uh, he has brought me some good luck so far in my two Custodian games. He hasn't died yet. He definitely avoided new model syndrome, and I'm glad to see that if I ever play in a in a competitive setting, I will be able to bring him. So let's look at, at what this is going to affect. So the Leviathan Contemptor and Dredero Dreadnoughts. The, the Dredero is the one that has the two guns and the missile launcher on top. It kind of looks like a, uh, a mecha from Battletech, I think. Uh, Kratos, Sikaran, Spartan, Cerberus, and Typhon tanks. Okay, so there's, this is the too many tanks problem here. And then also certain later variants of the Land Raider. Um, the Vindicator and the Whirlwind. So not only, I think you'll, be, you'll still be able to use your Land Raider Crusader just fine, Land Raider Redeemer. I darn well better be able to use the Crusader and Redeemer because I just bought one of those in plastic. <clears throat> and I don't think that that counts as a Perus Heresy uh, model at all. The Vindicator, though, yeah, and certain variants of the Whirlwind. I don't have a Whirlwind. Uh, a lot of the Flyers, which, okay, fine. Flyers are not Legion support weapons. Fellblades, Falchions, Mastodons. Okay, so the fell blade, I don't remember what that is. Falchion is like, a big, I think, a tank destroyer. And the Mastodon is this really gargantuan transport with this big, massive front that disgorges just hordes of them. I think it's got a troop transport capacity of like um, 26. 
Uh, it's ridiculously expensive. Uh, Javelin attack speeders, okay. Uh, dreadnoughts and Deathstorm drop pods. So the two specialty kind of drop pods, you will use those in competitive play anymore. The dreadnought drop pod hurts. <laughs> A Secutari hoplites and Peltas and Terra Expander termite. Okay, so no more of the termite drills. <laughs> that's going to kind of suck for chaos. I don't have any, but I think for chaos rings, that's going to suck. Um, Secretary Harris. Oh, and I missed this down here. Decimators are gone. Oh, yeah. I'm not quite sure about these chaos ones. Now, I don't own any of these other ones. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the Dreadclaw Drop Pod. That's a competitive play. That, that could be a problem. I, I, I think that might be a bad decision. Now, I don't own any of your claws, but that takes away pod capability entirely from Chaos, and I don't know that that's great. Um, that's after the what I think is one of the very worst decisions of 9e, and that was taking away the jump pack option for Chaos Lords. I have no idea why you would take that away, and I don't know why out of all these units. Um, I, I can see the Decimators easier than I can see the Drop Pods. Now, granted, you can still use them, and I'm not really playing competitive, but there's something about this that grates a little bit. Okay. Imperial armors that are also... These are for match play and narrative. Now, it does say these are for matched and narrative, but not competitive events. So they'll still be fine on the tabletop. Uh, I'm just kind of regretting buying the second decimator now. <laughs> um, I tried out a two decimator list focusing on mortal wounds that did not do what I thought it would do. Although, on the to be fair... Uh, I had some bad rolls in that game, and I don't like to blame it on bad rolls. I, it was specifically I had some very bad charge rolls in that game that that hurt me a lot. Uh, the other bad rolling was fine. It's just the, the failures were on some critical charges, and that was bad. And not long ones, either. Okay, um, so Custodians and Imperial Knights can still be used. That, that though, that's very important. The Custodies are not getting hit by this. Uh, I, that's going to be critical if you're a Custodies player. Uh, I am. I'm really going to be playing them a lot more. I'm also looking at. I may be playing a lot more custodies and craft worlds in this edition. Which it's unfortunate. My salamanders quickly grew to be a very large army, and overtook some of the other ones. And now they think they're going to be sitting on the shelf more. But I'm going to talk more about that in another video. Uh, so overall, uh, I'm slightly displeased with some of this, with some of the picks, um, the, specifically the decimator and the contemptor dreadnought. Uh, Xenos completely escaped any hit with this because the Xenos are not part of the Harus heresy. Um, I don't, I don't know how that's going to play out because you're still going to have some things like El Eldari have hornets in there, uh, but I don't know that the Xenos armies use these a whole lot. Uh, I didn't see the Drakari Reaper in there. I, I wonder if that's going to plastic because that's one of the ones that uh, they stopped selling. We'll have to wait and see. That was interesting. The ones that they stopped selling, you don't see all of them in here. Anyhow, uh, that's all I have to say on this. Um, thanks for listening. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below, and click the notifications bell for more great content from Wilderness Wargaming. And I will see you back here again very soon.